It is a game day for the Memphis Grizzlies as they take on the LA Lakers for the first time this year. So it is time for a game day update. Joining me all the way from LA, Allie Clifton. Thank you for being here today. Of course. Thanks for having me. This was in a really exciting one last year because the highlights still like play on loop in the Memphis world. I don't know if you remember, it was like that crazy job block um, where he like got it with two hands. It was LeBron dunking on Jaron. Like there oh, were yeah. highlights last year playing the Lakers. So I think everyone's a little amped for tonight. I was going to say, you guys, I feel like lead the league though in highlights. So I'm like, uh, let me think of all the highlights <laughs> that you guys have all the time. Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> no, I do remember those. <laughs> um, okay. So tonight is extra exciting because it's two of the league's top 10 scorers, two mm-hmm. of the league's top 10 scoring teams. Um, and I was looking, this is one and two when it comes to teams in scoring in the paint. So tonight's just going to be like, attack the key, attack the key. What are we going to expect from the Lakers side? If it's the first time the Grizzlies fans are seeing the Lakers, how do they, how do they score? Look, I think right now it's something that they've obviously hung their hat on. They've been successful with um, in the last couple of weeks, you know, they had their moment in Sacramento where they put up 70 paint points on 61% shooting uh, for the entire night. It's been their MO and, and look, it's no secret that, at times they've been streaky. They need more consistent shooting from the outside, but they've got guys that can pound it in um, down low and, and make it count. Um, obviously when you are without um, a handful of, you know, your key rotational pieces, um, there's a lot of um, things that in terms of finding the easy opportunities, whether that's on the fast break, uh, whether that's simply running a um, simple, offense within the half court set it's something that they can lean on it's something that has uh been there for them a a go-to option and so i know that you're going to continue to get that from the lakers side of things uh you're mentioning people who are in or out the only person that i see right now is ad is there more yeah we've been without lonnie walker the fourth um as well and austin reeves um yes out um for the grizzlies if you're watching this and just don't know the injury update everyone's playing uh, Danny Green, obviously still out, a former Laker, and Zaire Williams is questionable um, moving forward. But I think one thing that I want to talk about, obviously, is LeBron James, one of the best, if not the best player in the world, in the NBA. Um, it's never stopping LeBron. Of course, you know that you've been covering him for years. It's uh, the ability to possibly slow him down, make him work harder for the points that he does get. Um, and one of the best wing defenders in the league right now has been Dylan Brooks over the last um, probably season so far. What are you looking forward to about this matchup? I think just simply whether it's Dylan Brooks or whether it's the Memphis Grizzlies in general, they always play with this belief and this understanding um, that they can match up and compete with anyone any given night. And, and they believe that they can win any given night, no matter who is on the other side. I know we've talked about it over here a lot. When the Grizzlies come to town, come to L.A., uh, the lights just never seem too bright. And so you add in that dynamic of obviously LeBron James always headlining for the Lakers and he's playing at a clip that's so historic. You know, we can all talk about season 20, we can talk about 38 years old, but at the other, uh, at the end of the day, the other night, I, I had a moment where I think the most intriguing element to his game right now is simply just his ability to be available and show up every single night. And, um, you know, the, the second night of a back-to-back earlier this week, um, he puts up a season high 48. He had been averaging in set situations 34 and he completely eclipsed that mark. It's just no challenge. I, I don't believe in his mind at this stage of his career is too big, uh, but it's certainly one that I think he relishes. And, and I know that intensity and competitiveness from the Grizzlies, whether it's Dylan Brooks or them as a whole um, is something that I think will be fun to watch. Yeah. I mean, LeBron wows us all the time. Of course, this is one of his highest score. It's like fourth highest scoring season or something in his incredible. Like, wild and, and they um, needed it that's the thing when you're yeah. without anthony davis obviously correct and and just the bodies that they've lacked throughout the course of the season someone has had to step up and he certainly met that moment and risen to the occasion yeah and i mean on the, the complete opposite side at least of like age is the headliner of the memphis grizzlies and that's john moran look the grizzlies are going for their 12th consecutive win tonight ali that would be a franchise record if Ja scores 26 points tonight he hits that clip of 5,000 points. So he's obviously hungry going into tonight. I mean, everyone always says like coach him, like I'm never more hungry than other games, but there is a few things on the line for John Morant tonight. 
when you're looking from the Lakers side, the Grizzlies are very much like top defense, top rebounding, top, you know, everything on like the defensive end has been great for them so far. But from the Lakers side, what is like, who slows, who's the jaw slower down or like, who's the, what's the game plan to slow him down? Obviously, uh, as we know, former Hoopers ourselves, right? You have that one individual matchup, but Mm -hmm. you can't just put one individual on a guy like John Moran. You can't. That's why he's one of the best in the league, right? And and you're not going to be able to stop him. The key is to obviously give him a steady diet of several different looks throughout the course Mm -hmm. of the game. Um, Bring that intensity, match that energy, if not exceed it um, from his end. Good luck. (laughs) Um, Having said that, though, I think the one thing from day one for the Lakers has always been about defense, and it's certainly taken a step back, large in part because you're missing that rim protection and that interior without Anthony Davis. But the one thing they can control, and we know you can control on defense, is your energy, your effort, your communication. Um, So I'd like to just pick one individual, um, but at the end of the day, that's not the truth. That's not the reality. And so as a team, as a collective, the thing for the Lakers is lately they have seen whether it's De'Aaron Fox, whether it's Luka Doncic, lethal weapons in the backcourt. And so you have a, a recipe, you know, they've competed um, mm-hmm. with those guys, not comparing any of them to one another, but mm-hmm. the speed, the intensity, their approach uh, to the offense. Um, I think the Lakers have some things that they can throw at jaw. And as long as they play close to 48 minutes, obviously uh, with that team attack, uh, they give themselves a chance to win. It's going to be fun tonight. Either way, it's going to be a fun one. This is the first time that we're seeing each other this year. And I mean, it's like you said, it's the bright lights. It's LA guys are going to have to come to play either way. So Ali, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you so much. You're the best. Absolutely. Wish you were out here, girlfriend. Whenever you travel, please let me know. Oh, trust me. You'll be the first person yeah. I hit up. Uh, <laughs> Grizzlies fans, the game tips off at 9 p.m. tonight. So have a dinner, have a coffee, stay up. It's going to be a good one and we'll see you then.